Hi guys, how's it going? Um, I've been messing with my ring light for far too long because um, I know that I have my glasses and I don't have the anti-glare business on them so my ring light is really annoying and it's basically directly over my pupils uh, and it annoys me as much as it annoys you. Um, I have just shoved it up high on a high chair that I have stored in my basement and I think it's a little bit better. It's not quite as close so hopefully you can't see all my wrinkles and stuff either so that's good. I don't know. We'll see how it goes this time and uh, if it's annoying, if it's no better then just let me know. There's not a whole heck of a lot more I can do but I'm trying. Um, okay, so little tiny bit of nail news. I uh, got another shipment today from Nebula Dips. And so of course I had to swatch them immediately and I, uh, I'm i still pretty sure, and I shouldn't be shocked anymore because I've had a couple of them and they blew my pants off. But um, when I swatched these ones again, my pants blew off. Um, so I'm going to talk about my three, I can't even call them my favorite, but I'm, I think it's the three that everybody kind of has to own. Unfortunately, I don't think you can get this one all the time, but maybe if we bug Nikki enough, she'll put it in the, um, regular lineup. Well, I don't know. We'll see. I'm going to get on her case about it and see what happens. So this one is the inspiration to my manicure after this manicure, um, and it is called LHR and it is a thermal foil dip. It is stunning. It has a um, black, gray, dark gray, I guess, base uh, when it's cool and it has red foils in it. Who does red foils? Not many people. But when it's warm, and can I warm it up enough with my hands? I can. I can warm it up enough with my hands. Hallelujah. Um, I'm not going to be able to warm it up to its like greatest potential of warmness um, but when you warm it up the base turns very translucent so it I mean like how cool is that how cool is that that's so cool this was a free when you spent I think $30 or more between a certain date and I did so I got it um, another one is another shifter from her and it's called Eagle and you will never be able to see how cool this is. Uh, it reminds me of, it's like a, like a raisin type base and then it has like a blue shifting. It's really, really cool. It reminds me of an eyeshadow I used to use in high school when I thought I was grunge. Um, and I wasn't, I was just, I mean, I wasn't actually cool enough to be grunge, but I tried. But this reminds me of one of those eyeshadows. I'll, I'll maybe I'll pop a picture up of it at the end of this video, or if I can figure out how to do it, I'll take a good picture and insert it now. I really hope that works. And finally, another one that is a temp changer. And you know what? I don't even I don't actually usually like temp changers. I like I don't know why. Like I think they're really cool, and I think they look cool on other people. I just don't love having to try to plan. Um, a color scheme around that many colors like oh well what's it gonna look like when it's warm with this and what's it gonna look like when it's cool with this uh, but I'm making exceptions here because these are awesome um, it's helix helix is incredible it is a dark gray base with like a teal and also like a navy sh like fine glitter in it and then when you warm it up let me try to warm it up again I should have brought some warm water down here I wasn't thinking ahead wasn't planning ahead. I should have. Maybe next time. Maybe next time when I'm playing with temp changers, I'll think ahead. I'm just rubbing it on my hand, hoping some friction happens. Okay. Yep. Yep. Look at that. It's, it's turned into like a lavender base. And so the, the blue and the teal glitters in it. And I think there's also purple glitters in it. It's just beautiful. So pretty, yeah. So that's Helix, Nebula Dips. I also have this many more swatches of stuff that I got from her today. Um, but I'm going to get into these later because they're really cool. There's two more temp changers in here. I actually 
actually really like them. So maybe I'll do a whole a whole thing on those. I don't know. I want to use Eagle for a Manny shortly, so maybe I'll get into the rest of the swatches when I do that. So that is the end of my little bit of nail mail nail news. That's hard to say. Um, and so tonight I'm thinking I'm going to do a tortoise shell manicure. Um, I'm not quite ready for Valentine's Day stuff yet. It's still January. Um, I can't really wrap my head around the fact that February is so, so close. It's this year already is speeding by. And I think that just happens when you get um, past the age of 30. Everything just kind of just it's just gone. It's just gone. You wake up one day and you're like, holy shit, I'm 36. How did that happen? I still feel like a kid. I would like an adult chaperone for everything in my life. So, um, yeah, it's I'm not ready for Valentine's Day yet. I'm not ready. I, you know what? Like, we don't even, my husband and I, we don't do a Valentine's Day thing. Like, we'll wake up and say, happy Valentine's Day because, I don't know, it'd be silly not to. Or at least recognize that it's a day. And, and I let my three and a half year old put some red lipstick on for the day because it's fun and sometimes we'll make heart cookies or something so I mean it's cool to get into it with the kids but treating it as like a gotta tell my spouse that I love them sort of day is a little bit silly to me you should just be doing that all the time and not need a special day but I think it's really cool when people actually want to celebrate it um I just it's not for me it's just a lot of effort <laughs> like we just got off of Christmas I don't need to do anything else and buy more stuff, try to come up with ideas. It's not. I'm just very happy that I found and married somebody who isn't over the top with holidays like that. It's, yeah, pretty glad. Pretty glad because I'm exceptionally lazy. Um, so, yeah, no Valentine's. So I'm going to do some tortoise shell. I might do like a black nail with it. And I might do um, a nude. I'm not quite sure. It's going to be another like sort of do a mani with me videos because I don't have anything entirely planned out. I'm going to do again voiceover style because it worked a lot better for me um, and I don't have to edit down as much. I can speed through things in editing and just talk about what's important and you guys don't have to watch it in real time and I don't have to try to pick and choose when I said something important or when I did something important and cut things in and out. So I'm going to do another voiceover style and I might just go back to like real time type videos if I do like an unboxing or unbagging uh, when I get some more stuff in. And I am waiting on a few little pieces of nail mail so I'm very excited. I'm waiting on something from Manny Mix which I'm incredibly jazzed about because I've been looking at these particular colors for a little while and um, maybe I'll do like an unbox and swatch when I get my Manny Mix stuff in and I'm also waiting on some dirty dip and I am also waiting on I think Manny Moguls I can't remember I'm gonna have to check my mail tracking app so I'm gonna cut it here I'm gonna get set up and kind of decide what I'm gonna do and then I'll start filming and I will hopefully see you guys at the end of this video with some pictures probably tomorrow because again it's nighttime while I'm doing this. So um, yeah, that's it. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye. Hi, just kidding. I'm back. Uh, two quick things I want to mention before I get to doing the tortoise shell nail. Um, I have not done this on my fingers before. I did it on two swatch sticks previously. I didn't really like how it came out. I'm hoping that I've learned from my mistakes and it looks better once I get it on my actual fingernail. Um, also, I you're gonna see my left hand in this video doing all the work. Um, it looks, I mean, it's getting, it's getting pretty gross. Focus, focus. Anyway, I don't know if you can see, but like I'm getting lifting and it's growing out and stuff. That's intentional. I'm leaving it uh, gross and crusty and in need of repairs because I'm hoping to do a dip fill video um, of my base color so that um, I can show you guys how to do it. So I'm going to leave it maybe three, four more days until it's like exceptionally obvious and yuck and I get some lifting and all that kind of stuff so that I can really get into how do you fix these problems and how do you do a fill with dips so that you don't have to take it all off every time. So just wanted to let you know um, 
I don't really know what I'm doing, so you're just going to sort of learn along with me. Um, I'm going to attempt something I probably shouldn't. I'm going to do like half my nail, solid black, half of it with tortoiseshell. Let's see what happens. I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. Okay, guys, ready to go. I left that one bare because that's my art nail. That is Revel Coco. So is that. That is Revel Haut and Revel Calica. Cala, cala, cala. I can't say that name without doing that, at least in my head. I should just leave it in my head. Okay, for the accent nail, I'm using Barbara and Calica. And of course, some Pro Base. And I also just have regular old acrylic craft paint from the dollar store. Uh, to do the tortoise shell, I um, like to use a ball tool instead of uh, ball tool dotting tool instead of uh, paint brushes really I just I had them out in case I needed to do any fine tuning uh, but I didn't actually end up using them at all so I have black brown a mix of black and brown plus a very watered down brown so that it's a little bit more transparent Yeah, crossed my fingers. Didn't work that well. Well, I don't know. We'll see. So I'm going to speed through all of the uh, boring bits as fast as I, I can uh, to try to cut the length down on this. So I did half my nail with Pro Base, dipped into Barbara, cleaned up my cuticle, let it set a little bit. and went in with another layer of Barbara. Again, cleaned up my cuticle, of course. And I had to get Vivian out because we're gonna use it a few times, quite a few times. Um, because tortoiseshell needs to have kind of a layered look for it to look authentic. And then I'm going to do the other half with just one base layer of calica. And um, now that I'm doing this voiceover when it's finished, I should have gone with, with a bit of a darker base. I don't really have a color that's like um, a more creamy yellow. I wish that I did. I might look for one. So if anybody has any suggestions on a creamy type yellow, but also a little translucent, let me know in the comments. And so I got some of the watery brown as the base layer for the tortoise shell. And then just paint like a blob a nice word blob and then make another blob and heck go wild make a third blob what an awful word blob I feel like the way I did this, it's less tortoise shell, more giraffe spots. Now that I'm just sitting here actually looking at it, maybe I'll name this video giraffe spot nail. No, I won't. I'm not taking the easy way out. I still like it. I do like it. I just feel like I kind of sort of missed the mark on tortoise shell. But that happens. So I'm just waiting for that to dry, sped things up, having some wine.
But yeah, you can see with the watery brown, it adds a bit of dimension already just with the first layer. After that is totally dried, I'm going in with a layer of Vivian. I am really, really getting to the end of that bottle of ProBase. But I'm pretty proud of myself because I'm getting to the end of the bottle. It's not contaminated. It's not gloopy. It just, uh, I'm just running out. So long live the lint-free wipes and remembering to actually use it. So we'll have to clean up cuticles even after using clear because you don't want uh, any lip by the cuticle area where it can start lifting. Not that uh, I give my nails a chance to really lift because I change them too often. But if you wanted to leave this on for longer than two days, still you got to clean your cuticles even if you're using clear. And I brush it off very aggressively so that you don't get any haziness or bubble looking stuff stuck in once you put your activator and all that on. So I'm going to go in now with um, a watered down version of the middle shade of brown. I'm kind of just mixing at the same time to see if I like what I've got. Probably could have sped this part up too, Tina. Do you like my newly acquired hand freckles that I got in Mexico? Those are nice. I don't get cute freckles on my face. I get them on my hands where it looks like liver spots, like I'm a 95-year-old woman. Okay, so I picked up some of the waterier uh, medium brown shade with the dotting tool. And then you just go over and make these marks, blobs, marginally smaller than um, the first layer. And you don't have to stay inside the lines. Like if you look at actual tortoise shell, you can see that it's, it's not like a complete gradient. It kind of overlaps itself and goes all over the place. But uh, your base layer should be kind of a guideline of where you're gonna put this, this color. Trying to soak up some of the excess water, but these lint-free wipes don't soak up anything. But I'm still gonna keep trying because I never learn. have to wait for that layer to dry also it's a bit of a process the waiting um, and I know a few people when I do a layered look like this are asking you know how thick is your bloody nail at the end of this you have like eight layers of dip on there uh, but it's actually not really I, I mean it's a hair thicker than my other nails that have just three layers of dip um, I will take a picture of how thick it is and put that on my Instagram post and I'll link my Instagram. I mean, I'm sure if you found these videos, you also know um, where I am on Instagram because I don't know how you would find these otherwise. But I'll link it anyways, just in case so you can see how thick it is. It's just super, super important to try to keep your pro base as thin as humanly possible and do a really, really good job brushing off the excess to keep things thin and neat and so they don't get chunky. So 
So one other layer of Vivian. See, it's not, I'm, it's not really chunky. I hate some chunky nails. It happens sometimes. Some powders seem to just be a little bit thicker or adhere more when you're dipping. But uh, Vivian, if you're doing thin pro base and brushing really well, it doesn't seem to add a whole lot of thickness. Thank goodness. And so this, I'm making the darkest brown shade uh, for the final layer of tortoiseshell. Um, it's pretty close to black. I just didn't want it to be a stark black. And adding a bit of water so it has a bit of translucency once it's on the nail. And then I'm using a smaller, the smaller end of one of my dotting tools. And then again, just go over top of your marks already, uh, but just slightly smaller so you can see all the variations of brown um, when you're totally done through the layers. And again, you can kind of go outside the lines. My furnace just kicked on because it's cold out today. I'm hoping it's not too annoying to listen to. It's pretty loud. So yeah, I think the fun part of this um, kind of design, not even just tortoise shell, is you know, anything that you're painting on your nails is, it never ends up the same, it never looks the same as somebody else's, you can play around. Um, the possibilities are pretty much endless uh, if you want to do painting practice. I'm never going to be that girl who can paint like a, a realistic looking anything on my nails. I just don't have that kind of artistic ability. I wish that I did. I'm envious of people who do, but I can still play around and test some of these cool things that I'm seeing on uh, Pinterest and Instagram and stuff and kind of fake my way through. Um, but yeah, I have a lot of respect for, for those people who can do the crazy detailed nail art and get straight lines and make actual, you know, shapes like a star. Like, I think there's no chance I can do that. I need a stencil or a stamp. So waiting on that to dry and then a final layer of um, Vivian before activating. Uh, you always want to cover acrylic paint with a layer of dip because if you don't, activator will make it all run together and it will no longer be what you just painted. Uh, Pro base or a base coat, whatever you're using, does not make acrylic paint run. So uh, definitely always a layer of base, a layer of clear, and your design should be safe. So I've activated, and I noticed that I have a bit of dip on the inside of my cuticle. So I use my cuticle tool on my drill at a very, very low speed, um, usually around 2,000 RPMs, just to pull it away because it gets a heck of a lot harder to fix any mistakes like that once you have top coat. Uh, but I love this, I love this 
drill bit because you can go and if you see any um, staining on your fingers from a dark color or any dip that's gotten underneath your nail, sometimes it, I find it hardens if it comes into contact with activator as well. This bit is amazing for getting that all out and so you don't have that like gross, my finger is stuck to my nail feeling that you can get sometimes after a manicure. I hate that feeling. Uh, but the, the ball drill bit gets rid of it. And especially if it's on a low speed, you don't really have to worry too much about taking any chunks out or gouging anything. Just keep your drill slow. So final activator, definitely cap your edges on this one because you're gonna be capping your edges with finished gel and it needs to cure there as well. I love Haute. I love that color so much. I'm excited to use it in the summertime when I've got a bit of a tan because it looks so different with different skin tones. But I have yet to see it look bad on anybody. Let that dry. I always wait two minutes after I activate. Then I wipe with an alcohol wipe. A lint-free wipe with a little bit of rubbing alcohol on it. And when I say a little bit, I mean a little bit. I don't want to make my nails wet again. I just want to have enough alcohol on there to make any activator on there evaporate. And then I usually wait about a minute. I don't think I waited a full minute this time, but typically I do. And then your first layer of top, again, real quick, one, two swipes. And I always, always, always get finished gel on that edge of my pinky because I have small pinky nails and even this size brush uh, is a little bit too big for them, whatever. Maybe I could transplant some of my wide middle finger onto my narrow pinky nail transplants. And this is the layer of top coat that you want to be wiping your brush between fingers before it goes back into the bottle because there's a slight possibility that there's still some activator wet on your finger and that's what will make your top coat go bad. So new lint-free wipe. I usually don't wait even this long to start my second coat. I just get right in there. And this one can be your detailed coat where you're making sure you're hitting every spot and capping your edges. And again, every dang time. Well, yeah, as you can see, I changed my nail shape. I had stiletto for a week, um, but I kept actually giving myself bruises having stiletto nails. Plus, my daughter cracked one of them on me. She just cracked the dip on top, so it wasn't a tragedy, but I did have to remove that nail with acetone and start fresh, so I thought, well, if I'm taking this off, I might as well just change the shape. So I went almond this time and I think I really like it. I've never had almond nails before. I always had square French tips when I was in high school because that's what you did in high school. And then I had a uh, stiletto when I was a little bit out of high school, probably my early twenties. And then I mostly just had like tapered square. I was always scared to try almond because you have to be so precise with your shaping. Um, to make sure that the like the tip is in the center and anyways it's a pain but I love it so here we go there we are all done I'll take some pictures and put them up at the end of the video like I said it's not perfect but that's what happens when you do nails and you don't really know what you're doing <laughs> 
Okay, guys. Well, that is it. I um, like I said, I haven't done this before. Um, on my own hand, I practiced on a few swatches, honestly, months ago. Um, that's what we're left with. You can't really, I mean, I'm not going to lie. This isn't fabulous tortoise shell, but that's how it goes, right? Like you try things and you learn things and you screw up and you decide what you need to do better next time. I know now that I need a more yellowy brown base for this. Calica is not the best nude base for this. Um, I may even want a yellow type polish to use as a base. I'm not sure yet. Um, but as a whole, I mean, I, I don't hate this manicure. I, I've, I've definitely finished manicures and been like, oh my God, I need to immediately take this off. Um, but I don't hate this one. So did I learn things? Yes. Did I have fun doing it? Of course. Was it relaxing? It always is. So I think that's kind of a success. And I hope that you guys maybe learned a few things too. See maybe at least a few materials that you can use for a manicure that you may not have thought of. Um, acrylic paint is awesome. It works so well. Pro Base does not make it run. So you can always, always, always put a layer of clear over whatever it is that you've painted. Um, without worrying about it, screwing it up. If you put activator over acrylic paint without a layer of Vivian or clear, whatever brand you're using, uh, it will run. So definitely pro base, whatever base, clear over acrylic, and then you're safe for activator and all that stuff. Um, I'm hoping I can get this cut down to a reasonable length after I go through editing and do my voiceovers and stuff. I saved you the hassle of watching me dip all my other nails. So um, yeah. I, uh, I hope you guys find this helpful and I hope that it's at the very least uh, slightly interesting and maybe you've picked up a trick and decides you want to go to the dollar store and buy a million acrylic paints so that you can paint on your own nails. So um, until next time, which will probably be a fill because these are driving me crazy, um, have fun with your nails guys. Bye.